What's up guys, it's Pistol back with another video. Um, I apologize for the inconsistency in the past few videos, well, in the past few days for not dropping videos. Um, I recently just went through uh, a death and we were dealing with that as a family. And uh, now that we're back, today we're gonna do a short little video on the prison system and the scale, the scale that they they use to um, identify you as maximum security threat or minimal, and uh, so I can only use myself uh, as an example. So I never had an adult case prior to my five to ten, my five years, five to ten year sentence that I received. <clears throat> So I was a zero on the scale, which helped. But because I got charged in two counties, my one county charged me uh, with a one to two and a one to two to run concurrent with each other and concurrent with future pending charges uh, in, in Fayette. And uh, that was a lookout. Um, but because I got charged first, before the Fayette thing, when I went to Fayette, I was a three on the scale. And uh, I think it goes up to five. And so I'm almost at the very top. I had like 140 points. And it all goes off of the crimes that you have, being that mine were unlawful possession of firearms, uh, two residential burglaries, uh, one person present, one wasn't. Um... It, it it jacked my points up. So if I would ever get arrested now for something minimal, even a, a, a misdemeanor or something, when I go back in front of the judge, I'm not going to be uh, getting the minimal sentence that I can get or the minimum. It's just not going to happen no more. Um, and that sucks and a lot of people don't know about this point system and that's why it becomes a revolving door a lot of times and people uh, kind of feel like they have no hope like it's over like their life's ruined because they caught a felony and they can't find work and maybe they go back for something crazy small I mean not small like jaywalking but small like Driving with, with an uninsured sticker, that's going to send you back. And then uh, when you get sentenced in front of the judge, you're going to be a, like a four or five on the scale, depending on what you got sentenced for the first time. So say you're 18 and you burglarize a house, you're going to be like a three out of five on the scale for your next offense. So if you are 30... And you fill up a shopping cart and you run out of Walmart with it and get busted. You're going to get whacked. So you're going to feel like you shouldn't do that much time. And then a judge is going to say, I'm giving you a 3 to 6 for retail theft. Because that is the medium sentence that I can do on the scale. And that's because you're not a 0 on the scale. So he can't just say, you know what, probation. Or what the hell ever, you know what I mean? Drug court. Because... Obviously, if you're pushing a shopping cart out of Walmart, I mean, duh, you're fucking addicted to something. And it ain't stupid, because people just don't do that shit. But, so that's that's the prison scale. I know I just did, like, a super scaled down version of that. But that's how it works, people. So if you guys get in trouble... Just know that second and third chances are not as lenient as the first chance or your second chance. So third and fourth chances aren't as lenient as your second chance. You know what I mean? When the judge looks at you and says one to two for the three bricks of heroin that you got or you, the three bricks of heroin you got cells on and you come back in front of the judge for one brick of heroin, you, you're going to get like a four to eight. You're going to be like, what the hell? I just got a two to four for three. I only got caught with one. It's called the scale, my guy. 
And uh, that is what makes a lot of people career criminals. Like I said, they, they feel cheated, robbed, like they fucked up when they were 18, and they're paying for it for the rest of their lives. And these people sadly get arrested for we'll say that brick story and go back due to three to six and get out and now they do something stupid again and now they get a four to eight go in and come back out and next thing you know they got 10 years in prison and that's what they know every little life out here moves on trust and believe that trust and believe that life out here moves on without you with or without you always remember that Life is hard. Life is hard both ways. Being financially stable and being super crippled broke. I've been both. Never been like super financial stable, but this year alone we made 60K as a family, me and my wife. And uh, that's the biggest year that we've ever had. And that, that 60K right there it allows us to do some things but we struggle for sure we still struggle absolutely bills are still stressful christmas is still a little bit stressful so i i don't know what financial freedom feels like but i i do know what crippled broke feels like i know what half in the stuffed diapers in my pants and stuff and walk out of the dollar store a couple years ago because i couldn't afford diapers for my child is so no matter where you're at, I'm there. I've been there or I'm there right now. And unless you're wealthy, I'm not that. <laughs> but hopefully one day. But the moral of the story is second chances are far and few between. Ah, hell. America was built on second chances. Third and fourth chances, far and few between. And you can get roofed for that. Just remember, there's a scale, and if you got sentenced for something light the first time, the second time, no matter how light the crime is, it's not going to be a light sentence. So, that's my little uh, couple minute story on the prison scale. Um, if you guys enjoy the video, like and subscribe. Like I said, I'm going to drop content as frequently as possible, hopefully every day after this. Um, you can see all the marijuana uh, jars and stuff up there. Um, I have my medical card. Um, they're all empties too, by the way, so it's not like I'm sitting on fucking 200 pounds of jarred weed or anything. It just I usually collect the jars if it's a strain that I haven't smoked. Um, I don't know. I just think it's cool. So I'm going to do some strain reviews definitely some strain reviews and stuff but one thing i'm gonna i'm gonna do and i'm gonna start dropping it frequently is um well stay tuned you'll find out just hit the subscribe button uh it will be worth it uh i'm gonna go into epic rap beefs uh like we'll just say jay-z that motherfucker beefed with a bunch of motherfuckers. Jay-Z beefed with Fat Joe. Jay-Z beefed with Nas. I mean, that's probably the biggest one everyone knows, but... Jay-Z got cracked in an elevator. Like... Shit. Supposedly, Jay-Z cracked a bitch in the elevator. You heard me? Beyonce's sister. Remember that story? But... Just stuff like that, stuff I find interesting as shit, and uh, I'm just going to dive into it and spend a couple days doing research on the story and give present you guys with what I find. Kind of like a uh, Trap Lore Ross format, but uh, just a little different with a lot less corny London jokes. No offense to Ross, he's fire. I like his videos anyway, and not all his jokes are corny. You can just tell. It's funny how different parts of the world have different humor different slang different everything <clears throat> and uh like i said it's not a shot at ross i fuck with him heavy he don't even know my name but i know his you know what i mean and i'm hoping to change that one day but he definitely gives me inspiration uh he does and some of his punchlines, some of his jokes though wow like you can tell he, he could have did something on a stand-up circuit i'm telling you but before it looks like I'm gobbling that dude up, I'm gonna 
stop. Um, like and subscribe. I promise we'll find our way and we will grow this channel. And if I grow, we grow as a community. And that's my word. I plan on doing lots of give backs. Um, truly, I do. One of the biggest uh, things I'm working on now, I'll tell you guys, is a organization that helps teach the youth uh, how to grow their money once they have it or at least make their money make money not just park it in a bank and collect like point zero zero one percent interest and gain a penny every year on ten thousand dollars or something you know and you don't need ten thousand dollars I'm trying to teach kids how to turn a hundred dollars into a thousand dollars and how to make that thousand dollars stay in their pocket you know, if you want to go buy a pair of Nikes, that's cool. But you might have to wait two weeks to do it, even though you have the thousand in your pocket now. You want to grow that money. And then once you, you invest your money and you make the $250 for the Nike profit, now you can buy these Nikes and you still have your thousand dollars. You understand? It's not $750 now. <clears throat> so... That's something I'm doing. That's something I, I know I wasn't taught as a child how to manage money, how to make money. No, we're taught to get a job and kind of fall in line, right? But who wants to do that? And I understand not everyone can be famous. Not everyone can be wealthy. But wealth is more than just cash. Wealth is also self love self self love is is one of the most worthy things in this world but this isn't a spiritual channel and uh that's just a little insight on my life and something I'm working on now um but until tomorrow guys uh it's pistol and like I always say be comfortable in your own skin because it's illegal to wear someone else's hope you guys stay safe stay warm happy holidays